Hey, welcome back to Laser Engraving 911. So on this episode, we're going to get into a fiber laser that you probably don't know much about, and that's Epilogue's G100 flagship fiber laser. We're going to get into specs, operation, build quality, and most importantly, my thoughts on the unit as a whole. So if that sounds like something you want to get into, then buckle up, get your pen and paper out, because we're about to get into some epilogue fiber lasers on Laser Engraving 911. All right, so before we get started in this video, I wanna make it clear that Epilog did not send me this unit for free or to keep. They already know that I'm a big fan of their products anyway, and they wanted to get my honest opinion on the G100 fiber laser and kind of do an overview and give my thoughts to y'all. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get on with the review. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the design aspects of the G100. One of the first things that you're gonna notice is that it's fully enclosed. Not only does this help with safety issues, but it also greatly helps with fume extraction, which we're gonna talk about a little later in this video. So basically by enclosing a class four laser in a system like this with safety interlocks in place, they've made it a class one laser. And this can come in really handy, especially in industrial work environments where OSHA safety protocols need to be handled or other safety protocols. You don't have to wear goggles when you're using this machine because it won't work with the door wide open. That can eliminate a lot of headaches in the workplace. And that's what I think they had in mind when they created this type of fiber laser. Okay, so the downside of this is that you're not going to be able to work with longer items that you need to fit underneath the fiber laser. You're going to be limited to the enclosure when the door is shut of what you can fit into the machine. And that is the trade-off that you're going to have to make for these advanced safety protocols. Okay, so another one of the standout design features that I really like is the built-in fume extraction system that works with your external fume extractor. So what it's got, as you can see here, is it's got these two arms that you can really localize and get up really close to your piece that you're working on. And what that allows you to do is have extremely efficient fume extraction right at the area where you're working. But if you don't want to use those arms, you can actually just use this nice open and close register in the back and that will effectively extract all the fumes from whatever you're working on and you can open and close that register in the back depending on how much extraction you want. Now, I've got the G100 hooked up to the FilterBox Micro, and as you can see here, this unit pairs very nicely with the G100 because of its size. It doesn't need some huge fume extractor. And actually, speaking of the FilterBox Micro, this unit has been in my shop now for a while. I've taken it on some mobile events. I've hooked it up to my smaller Epilog, and no matter what I throw at it, it does a great job. One of the things that really stands out to me on it is how compact and small it is, but how powerful it is. And also, I love the fact that I'm able to check the different layers of filters individually using their test mode, which allows me to put the filters on the unit one by one and see if they need to be replaced rather than just putting up a bunch of money to replace all the filters in the system. So last but not least regarding design, I want to talk really quickly about the interface that is built in on the machine or the UI, the user interface. I really like the way they designed this panel that's built in the machine. It's an information panel, it's a control panel, and the thought that has gone into it, you can really see because it's very user-friendly and very intuitive. It shows you your current jobs, past jobs, allows you to focus the machine, jog up and down, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But the UI and the way they designed it is very clean and very effective, and I just wanted to point that out. All right, first let's talk about the laser source options. So with this unit, you can get the 30 watt or 60 watt standard pulsed fiber laser, or you can opt for a 60 watt Mopa laser. 
The laser source is made by JPT for the G100. Now, if you're just doing general metal engraving and some plastics here and there, you're gonna be just fine with the 30 watt or the 60 watt standard pulsed fiber laser. But if your business requires that you have to mark a wide variety of polymers of all different kinds, and you absolutely have to do color engraving on steel, then you're gonna wanna opt for the Mopa laser. And keep in mind, the higher the wattage, the more specialized the laser is, like the Mopot, this will definitely increase the cost of the laser. So if you don't really need it, then don't opt for that version because it's just going to cost more money in the end. So now I wanted to talk about the camera system that's built into the G100. They have the Iris camera system, and honestly, it's one of the best camera systems I've ever seen. The accuracy of this camera and when you use it to line up your engraving on whatever parts inside the machine is stupid accurate. Way more accurate than any of the other systems that I've tried. So with that said, you can still line up your parts manually. You can use trace lines to register and get things straight underneath there. But if you don't wanna mess with that, you can always default to using this high-end camera system that is in the G100, making your jobs very easy, very fast, and very accurate. Okay. I think finally we want to talk about one of my favorite features, and this may sound stupid to most people, but I just want to talk about the automatic door for a second. Can we run the B-roll of the door opening? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So <laughs> the G100 has an automated door that opens and closes depending on when the job is getting ready to start or when the jobs finish. And the design and thought that went into this is amazing. And the sound that it makes, can we listen to it one more time? <laughs> I just think it's one of the coolest features that the G100 has, but that's just me personally. I'm kind of obsessed with the automatic door, but I did want to share with you that there is an automated door and it's pretty cool. All right, next let's go over the inside workspace inside the machine. So it's pretty standard in there. You've got your pins set up in a nice grid so you can fixture things up or you can put blocks in to uh, line up your different projects that you have or any other fixtures you can screw down and they are threaded. So that's pretty standard across most fiber lasers nowadays and I was happy to see that that's how they made their bed. So right on guys. All right, the next one's important. We're gonna talk about the different lens options that you can get with the G100. So the G100 comes with a 101 millimeter by 101 millimeter lens, which is going to give you about a four inch by four inch working area with the lens that comes with it. You can buy additional lenses that are 152 millimeters by 152, giving you a six inch by six inch area. The maximum height of any object that you can set in there on the four inch by four inch lens is gonna be 10 inches and the maximum height on the six inch by six inch lens is going to be six inches. And I will have to say, if you're going to opt to get the larger lens as an additional lens, you're definitely probably gonna to wanna to have at least a 60 watt laser source in the G100, just because you're spreading all that power out in such a wider area, you still wanna be able to get that job done fast. You can use the six inch by six inch lens, with a 30 watt source, it's just going to take a lot slower to get those jobs done. So that's just a little tip from me to you. Can you get a rotary unit with the G100? Yes, you can, and they did not send me one to review, but I know that it is an option. You can totally use a rotary tool with this, and I'll list a link in the description below where you can go learn more about what that additional cost is, how it works with the G100, and see if that is something that you're going to want to get 
when you get the G100. It's really only if you're going to be doing things like rings or cylindrical objects that need full wraparounds that you're gonna want a rotary tool. So definitely check into that with Epilogue and uh, they can give you more information on that. All right, so we're getting close to the end here, but before we do, I wanted to talk a little bit about the software that comes with all Epilogue products, and that's called the Epilogue Job Manager. Now, whether you have a CO2 laser from Epilogue or the G100 fiber laser, this is the main interface that you're going to use from your graphic design program. Once you create your art, you're gonna shoot it over to the Epilogue Job Manager, which then is your final interface to make adjustments to your artwork, set all your settings, use the camera to line things up, do everything that you need to do before you send it over to the actual machine yourself. And that is the Epilogue Job Manager. So within that, when you're hooked up to the G100, you've got a bunch of additional tools that you can still modify your artwork, you can ungroup your artwork, you can set multiple hatch settings just like you can in Lightburn or EasyCAD, you can pick your hatch fill lines, you can pick your power, your frequency, uh, repeats if you wanna keep going over the same part over and over again. You're able to assign color coding to your graphic. So if you want one part of your graphic to have a certain setting and the other part to have another setting, you can do that in the Epilogue Job Manager. And of course, you can save your own personal library of settings. So down the road, you have all your favorite settings for all these different materials. You can save whole jobs and reload the job back into the machine. So it really is a very useful piece of software and it's where you do your last final modifications and set all your settings before you actually run the job. I wish we had a little bit more time in this video to get into how all that works, but it is a very robust piece of software. It's not too overcomplicated. And one last little thing that I love that they added for the G100 is your ability to generate your own test grids. Just like in Lightburn, they have that built into the Epilogue Job Manager. So if you got a new material, you're not sure how it's gonna react with the laser, you can build your own custom test grid, run that test on the material to dial in your settings just right, and then save that test grid for future use, which I think is pretty cool. All right, next I wanna talk about setting the parameters for your laser and the controls. So if you're new to fiber laser engraving or you're looking at the G100 to integrate this into your workspace or your manufacturing process, you're going to find this next part very helpful and actually pretty cool. However, if you have existing experience with fiber lasers and you've been using software like Lightburn for Galvo or EasyCAD, you might find this next part a little bit different. So I like to think of Epilogue as the Apple product of the laser engraving industry. From the very beginning, even before they had the G100, they've always tried to make the product super user-friendly, super safe to use, and extremely well built. That is what Epilogue is known for, in addition to their award-winning customer service, which I can vouch for, for sure. However, one of the things that's different about the way they control the laser parameters is they like to use percentages instead of the actual values of the laser settings. So things like speed, frequency, and pulse width are represented in percentages in the G100 instead of the actual number values. Now, for someone who has existing fiber laser experience, that can be really frustrating. However, they do have some tables over at Epilog that will help you translate those over. But if you're just getting into fiber laser engraving and those things really don't matter, then you're just going to have an easier time using the percentage values rather than the actual number values in millimeters per second and so forth. So with that said, what I'd really like to see in future software releases on the G100, because I know that it would appeal to a lot more users, is I would like to see them integrate a toggle switch in the software that allows the end user to toggle between real number values of those settings and or percentages based on your preference. And I think it would be something that would be easy to integrate 
into the G100. It's not a deal breaker by any means. It's just a little thing on my wish list that I'd like to see them integrate. Whew, that is a lot of specs that we just covered in this video. And I think now that we're towards the end of the video, I'm just gonna roll this montage of all these different materials that I was able to laser mark and laser engrave with the G100. Let the unit speak for itself. I hope you enjoy. And then once my little short montage is over, we'll come back to the table here and I'll give you my final thoughts on the G100. So with that, roll the montage. All right, so here's my final thoughts on the Epilogue G100. The build quality, fantastic. The JPT fiber laser source did a great job, which I was kind of surprised at, but it really did do a great job. Whether it was deep fiber laser engraving on metal or marking on plastic or fine laser marking, it really did a great job. I love the way the camera worked and how accurate it was and the overall design aspect and the thought that has gone into this machine to be safe, industrial, and just a solid workhorse is really impressive. Now, with that said, I would like to see them integrate maybe some changes in the future. One of those main ones you heard me talk about earlier was the ability in the software to toggle between true number values versus percentages. I think that would appeal to a lot more users down the road, um, but it's definitely not a deal breaker. The other feature that I would like to see them add is the ability to control when the door opens after the job is complete, maybe set a little bit of a delay just in case there's any fumes in there that still need to be exhausted when the job is complete. And finally, one of the features that I did miss on this that I have on my other fiber lasers is when I'm using a red outline, I don't like to just use a red outline box because there is a red outline box on the G100. I like to see the full contour of the graphic so it helps me align my part underneath there if I'm not using the camera. And I would love it if they added that feature down the road. So overall, I'm extremely impressed with the G100, and I think this unit is going to be best suited for industrial work environments and existing manufacturing plants where they need to add high level industrial fiber laser engraving capabilities into their existing business. All right, well that about wraps it up for this episode of Laser Engraving 911. I'd like to thank Epilog for sending the G100 over for me to try out and get my hands on. It's been fun and I really appreciate the opportunity. I'd also like to thank my channel members, my subscribers, and everyone watching this video for supporting me here. I couldn't do it without you. And if you'd like to get a hold of Epilogue and have more questions about the G100 or any of their units, I've listed a link below and you can go ahead and contact them directly. There's probably some questions that I didn't get to that you might have about this unit and Epilogue is going to be the best people to ask. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap it up and I'll see you around on Laser Engraving 911.